Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of Lyric and Letter. As you know, I'm Rebecca, and as always, I am thrilled to have you join us on this journey through worship and the word. Today is a very special episode because not only do we have an incredibly meaningful song to dive into, but I also have my wonderful husband and co-founder of Dual Lane Productions with me. Charles, would you like to say hi? Hello, everyone. You guys might recognize me from the Bible reviews that I do on the channel. Well, today I'm stepping into the wonderful world of Lyric and Letter, and I couldn't be more excited. It's a real privilege to be part of this special episode alongside Rebecca. I am so happy you could join us. Today, we're unraveling the layers of a truly touching and personal song to Charles and I, Sales, performed by Pat Barrett and Stephanie Gretzinger. This song explores the theme of love, vulnerability, and spiritual freedom, and it's one that has touched both Charles and I very deeply. If you'd like to listen to Sales, you can find it on our playlist at www.lyricandletter.com forward slash playlist. It's a song that we believe will speak to many of you as it did to us. Go ahead and take a moment to listen to the song. Okay, get ready to set sail into an episode filled with revelation, scriptural connection, and heartfelt discussion. So grab your Bibles, get a cozy cup of coffee or tea, get in that special place, and let's dive deep into worship in the Word. Hey, Charles, do you want to start us off with the first lyric? I'd love to. You know, there's a lot of emphasis in our culture on the falling in love part. We see it in movies and hear it in songs, but what comes after that? That's what fascinates me. The Bible paints a picture of love that is so different from what we usually hear. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, Paul gives us an outline of what love truly is. And it's not just a beautiful saying for weddings, it's a guide for life. Let's break that down a bit. Paul says love is patient. Patience just isn't about waiting. It's how you act when you're waiting. And love gives us space for growth and forgiveness. And it says, I'm here for the long run even when things aren't picture perfect. And then Paul talks about kindness. Now, kindness just isn't about being nice. It's about genuinely caring for somebody else's well-being. It's a selfless act devoid of all expectation. Love doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, and it is not proud. You know, envy can be a corrosive part in any relationship, but in love, it has no place. Boasting and pride can create distance, but love seeks closeness, understanding, and humility. Now, you may be wondering, how does this relate to me? Well, I've got a personal tale to share. Rebecca and I first crossed paths on a karaoke app. We moved from singing 80s classics to worship songs, and when we started singing Sales by Pat Barrett, that's when we felt a change. That song became a turning point for us. It drew us closer to God and ignited a spark between us. This scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, it was like it came alive in a whole new way. Rebecca and I realized that this was our blueprint. This was how we would love each other and how we would come to love God. And let me tell you, it's made all of the difference. What a wonderful memory and what a powerful way to start our conversation today. And it segues so well into what I want to talk about next. You know, being honest and vulnerable is scary, not only with each other, but when we're talking with God. The lyrics hard to be honest and keep your heart open to be who we truly are speak right into this, don't they? So let's start with Psalm 139, verse 1 through 4, which is my favorite. It's a loving nudge from God. It tells us that He knows us completely our ups, our downs, even our silent thoughts, and things that we probably don't want other people to know about. Friends, God's intimate knowledge of us isn't something to shy away from, but rather a call to be transparent. He loves us regardless of what he knows about us. Okay, moving on to Ephesians 4.25, we're gently reminded that honesty is not just a policy, it's a practice of faith. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. 
when we are honest, it sets the stage for God's transformative work in us. Just like Romans 12, 2 tells us, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, this holds such significance for how we live our life and our faith every day. We're not just individuals, but members of a broad body of Christ. He is our head. So being honest with him should kind of be natural. He knows everything about us, right? And our honesty can pave the way for deeper, more authentic relationships with God and each other. I remember feeling like I had to put a picture-perfect front of spirituality for the longest time. Social media and some early Christian music in the 80s and even television had me believing that I had to be flawless. Let me tell you, God is in the business of using our messes for His glory. It's okay to be real with Him. In fact, He prefers it. Now, I know it's hard to be honest, It was hard to be honest about my feelings for Charles. And I'm so glad he has the patience to deal with me while I deal with my inauthenticity. Well, you know, your reflections on honesty and vulnerability has got me thinking. There's another key aspect of our faith journey. I love how Paul puts it in 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom in the Spirit isn't like any freedom the world has to offer. It's transformational. I know this firsthand. Growing up, I was often told about a God who is more interested in punishing me than loving me. This skewed my understanding and actually drove me away from God, if you can believe that. But through worship and spending time in the Word, my perspective radically shifted. I'd felt like I'd been set free from a cage that I didn't even know that I was in. Jesus affirms this in John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free... You are free indeed. This isn't just a shallow freedom. It's deeply transformative. It allows us to step into our true selves knowing that we are fully loved and accepted by God with no judgments attached. Let us not forget what the other parts of the Bible teach us about freedom. In Romans 6.22 it says, But now that you've been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. So what does living in the freedom of Christ truly mean for us? It's more than just a catchphrase. It's a life-altering reality that invites us into a deeper relationship with God. Oh, Charles, your sharing about freedom in Christ is just what I needed to hear, and I know our listeners did too. It beautifully lays the foundation for what I'd like to share next. So you know how sometimes it feels like God is distant? almost absent, especially during the tough times? Well, the song speaks to this in a comforting way, saying, I'm finally seeing you were here all along. Your love wasn't absent. No, it doesn't come or go. Ah, what an amazing line and one of my favorites. Friends, let's go back to Psalm 139, 7 through 10. It's almost like a warm hug from God, reminding us that there's absolutely no place we could ever go where He isn't already there, loving us and holding us tight. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go into heavens, you are there. If I make my home in the depth of the sea, even there your right hand shall guide me. The answer is simply, there is no place you can go that God isn't there. Now, Romans 8, 38 through 39 takes this reassurance a step further. It says nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not our darkest days, not our biggest mistakes. Isn't that amazing? His love for us is constant and unchanging. This is so important to remember, especially when life tries to tell us otherwise. We are dearly loved, always by our Heavenly Father. 
It's like Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Even when things look bleak, we can be sure that God is right there loving us all the way. Speaking from my heart, if you don't mind, Charles, after losing Mark to cancer, I felt so lost and so far from God. I even made decisions that didn't reflect who I am or who God knows me to be. I made a lot of really heartbreaking mistakes. But my friends, even in that time, God's love was right there. It wasn't until moving 2,200 miles away from all that I knew in California, meeting Charles, moving here, starting a new job, and starting a new church, that I felt like I could really start seeing God's love clearly again. It took time, but I got there. Yes, and I'm so grateful that you are. And the way you spoke about God's unchanging love and his omnipresence, well, this really sets the stage for something that's been on my heart lately. That is how our understanding and image of God can evolve over time. In Ephesians 1, 17-18, it puts it beautifully. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Well, isn't that an incredible thought? As we grow in our faith, our view of God can change and deepen. And let us not forget that the verse goes on to say that I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. It's like God is lifting a veil and revealing himself to us in new and profound ways. That brings me to the other passage that resonates with me. In Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, and in Colossians 3, 10, they both talk about putting on a new self. It is as if God is not just changing our perception of him, but is also transforming us from the inside and out. And I can attest to this personally. I used to have this really limited view of God's love, but worshiping and diving into the scriptures with you, this has been a game changer for me. And I feel like God has lifted the veil and helped me see him in a completely new light. And you know what is even more remarkable? This deeper understanding is shaping how I view myself through his eyes. And in light of these beautiful truths, I wonder what this transformation looks like for each of us. This is a journey, not a destination. And it is one that could offer each of us a lifetime of revelation and renewal. So let's walk this together in the freedom and the love that God has so genuinely offered. I love what you just shared about how God doesn't just change our perception of him, but he actually is also actively working to transform us from the inside out. This beautifully mirrors a lyric that has been on my heart lately. The final verse, the one that opened up our hearts to each other. I let out the sails of my heart. Here I am. Here you are. Remember how we used to sing that to each other? Ah. Oh. Okay, friends, let's dig a little deeper into this lyric. When we look at Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. It's like an invitation to let the sails of our heart unfold. Just imagine you're on a sailboat. You have to trust the wind. You can't control it. Much like we have to trust God to guide us. If we don't let out the sails, we just drift aimlessly. But when we surrender control and allow God to set our course, we move. Just like in Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. This doesn't mean just physical stillness, but a quieting of our busy minds and our anxious hearts. It is in this stillness we hear God whispering, guiding us, loving us forward. Oh, and let's not forget James 4.8. 
draw near to God and he will draw near to you. I can personally testify to this. When I was navigating through some very painful chapters in my life, I made the conscious decision to draw near to God. And do you know what happened? He drew nearer to me, closer than I could ever have imagined. That closeness transformed me, and I began to see myself as God sees me, his beloved child. To tie this all back into what you're saying, Charles, the concept of our new self is not just about change. It's about transformation, both internally and relationally. We trust more deeply. We find peace in the stillness and draw nearer to God, understanding him and ourselves better. And the beautiful thing is, This all leads us to a more intimate, enriching relationship with our Creator and to each other. So before Charles leads us in prayer, let's sit with some questions to marinate on. You'll get a piece of paper and a pen or a journal and just breathe within these questions. Ready? How do you find it challenging to open your heart honestly to God, knowing that he knows you completely, as in Psalm 139, 1 through 4 says, does that ease some of those challenges for you? Next, has there ever been a time in your life where you felt God was distant, yet you later recognized that he was there all along? If so, How does Romans 8, 38 through 39 and its promise that nothing can separate us from the love of God change your perspective on those moments? One final question. In terms of surrendering, you know, letting out those sales we talked about, what does that look like for you currently? Charles, do you want to end us in prayer now? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, thank you for your constant presence in our lives. Lord, we want to let out the sails of our hearts and surrender fully to you. God, teach us to be still in your presence, to know and experience you as our rock and fortress. Father, we want to draw near to you, knowing that you will draw near to us. Refresh our spirits and help us return to you. May we experience the freedom and love that can only come from a relationship with you, confident that neither death nor life, angels nor demons can separate us from your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, love, for praying over us. Absolutely. It's been a true blessing to be part of this special episode. We love having you here. Now, if you want to dig deeper into today's theme, we have added this to our free devotional available for you to download. You can find it on our website at www.lyricandletter.com forward slash devotional. Now it's designed to help you take these scriptural insights to heart and apply them into your walk with the Lord. And if you've been blessed by Lyric and Letter, Rebecca has designed some special merchandise available. Your support helps keep this podcast going and you get some pretty cool gear in the process. Just head over to www.lyricandletter.com forward slash shop to check it out. She's got some really great items. Aw, thank you, love. You know I do love to design, and anything that I can do and make this world a beautiful place, I'll do it. So next week, we've got another soul-stirring episode lined up for you. I'll be diving into The Blessing by Carrie Joby and Cody Carnes. It has an amazing backstory that you do not want to miss. And although I won't be returning next week, I'm excited to tune in just like all of you. Oh, I have a feeling you'll be back soon. So until next time, keep those hearts open to the Lord, those Bibles handy, and may your lives be filled with beautiful music of worship and the Word. Amen to that. Have an amazing day in the Lord. God bless.